say right now, let's start off with Aura Goblet of Fire. Excitement wise, coming off of Prisoner of Azkaban, my excitement was over. It's just three, three exceptional movies have been put into this franchise. I have absolutely no reason to believe that the fourth won't be that good. And anytime I go back to Goblet of Fire, I really like this movie. Like, I really, really yeah, like this same. movie. And every time I go back, I'm, I'm happy to go back. Yeah, so we're talking about excitement. Honestly, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a 0.5 every time it's in that movie. Because, I mean, honestly, I, at a point, it's almost like a... Okay, I, would, I was the most hyped for part two, but I feel like it just gets exponential. I almost feel like 10 is a barrier. Uh, on a, on yeah. a scale. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. And except for going individually our excitement yeah i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our excitement for each movie right now okay oh okay All and right. we're just gonna we don't have to say we don't have to write it down just say it out loud goblet of fire i gotta say given uh given prisoner of Azkaban an eight i gotta give this an 8.5 for excitement you said 8.5 for the goblet of fire yeah i'm gonna say eight okay so 8.25. Now, Order of the Phoenix, go ahead. What would you give the Order of the Phoenix? I'm going to give it a 8.5. I would, I'm would. i still giving it an 8.5. Okay. Half-Blood Prince, I would give this movie right here. This is the first movie where I actually saw the trailer before seeing it. Mm-hmm. So, I got to oh, say, uh, my excitement was at 9 right here because I knew uh, Deathly Hollows is coming. We're about to get to the end. Yeah. And I was really excited going into Half Blood Prince. They're going to do something amazing with this movie. Yeah. I'm going to say nine also. And then, okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this out loud. Part one, I'll give it a 9.5. Part two, I don't think anything gets higher than that at 10. Exactly. Same thing. I was, I was planning it, I was distributing it like that 9.5 and 10 because I knew that the max, the number one movie I was excited for. Was the last one, and it's so sad when it's the last one that I think. Yeah. Okay. Be- now, now let's get into actually talking about the movies. Goblet of Fire plotline. Let's let's try and do what we did for the other ones. Let's try and remember everything that happened. First, the the tournaments. Obviously, yeah, there was the, the games. The games. Um, like the, oh yeah, there was a beef between like Harry and Ron. Oh yeah. Um, there was the like a Ron and think, Hermione too. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that wasn't really Harry and Ron. I think it was more of a Ron had a girlfriend, you know, and Harry. <gasps> Yo, it was at the dance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was this a- yeah, yeah, that movie at the dance where Ron didn't ask her out, and he went with somebody else, and it's like, oh, you know, you know, you're tra- you're being a traitor by going out with him. Yeah, but like, yeah. Oh, somebody's left. I right, go ahead. Uh, until he comes back. What else happened in this movie? You had all that. Do, 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 do. You had the matches. Voldemort was finally revealed in this movie. Uh, oh, we got in a lot of world building. Oh, I absolutely hate that woman. Okay, a lot of world building in that. Uh, we got to see the other uh, wizardry schools. We got to start. We got to start to see hints when it comes to uh, Voldemort and Harry's connection. Uh, just like their spiritual connection, I guess. Uh, bef- uh, right before Nebby comes back, I'll go ahead and start talking about the plot line. Uh, Nebby, here. All right. All right. Did you hear what I said? I, I heard you talking about. It. I wasn't paying attention. All right. So I remembered. Uh, you have the Quidditch matches. Uh, you have all of these crazy matches. The, what was it, three tournaments? You yeah. got to see world building as we got to go into more of the wizardry world and see more schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, what else did we have? I just I just said these and I can't remember them already. Such a short-term memory. We now. had a um, uh, morning model. Remember her? Oh, he, that's, the, you remember that one, the woman, right? The teacher. Yeah. I absolutely, that's another aspect. You know how the movie do, movies do a great job in 
making us hate the Dudleys. Yeah. They make us hate her so much more. Damn, like, to a fun. whole nother level. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, not more than Dudley, you know what I mean? But she's annoying as crap. No, no, I hate her, I hate her more than the Dudleys. Oh, darn. At least for the when it comes to the Dudleys, they genuinely hate hate Harry. Both we I feel like that's an insecurity type hate where they're like, oh, he's yeah. a, we don't get to be wizards, we don't have to have the, that type of life, right? But then yeah. when it comes to uh, what's her name? What's the teacher's name? Oh. I'm just gonna call her the woman for now. <laughs> when it comes, well, what, to, huh? What are you? What's the teacher? Hold up. Uh, no, 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 no. I think she's in this trailer. Yeah, did we skip a movie? Because remember that uh, one scene in like one of the movies in, in the franchise where like uh, they they had to like there was this professor mm-hmm. who was like uh, who was like famous and um, like he had a lot of books and he tried to like you know. I think it was Chamber of Secrets, actually, where this happened. There was this one dude, and, like, he lost his memory. And he was the professor of dark arts. Oh, oh I, I know I know who you're talking about. Yeah. What movie was that? That was Chamber of Secrets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We skipped yeah. the whole thing that happened. Uh, to be truthful, that that plot line isn't as memorable as yours. Yeah. And it's not as fun. It was just kind of like a subplot that was in the book and they included it in the movie. They didn't have to though. Oh, yeah, what is it? The Professor of the Dark Arts. Every time I go back and rewatch Harry Potter, eh, the, I just laugh at how often that position gets changed. It's every, every time. Other, every other year. No, no, every every year. Yeah. Oh, I said yeah. every other year. Never mind. My, every year, yeah. And then the fact that uh, Snape, Snape is the most credible person and he can really do it. And I saw some theories on this. Uh, you guys can go check them out for yourself. Just how Snape was the is the only one that is really qualified, but he never gets to be the teacher for the professor of the dark arts. Yo, we also got to say, we have to, I think it was maybe the, this one where the new Dumbledore came. I'm not sure, but we haven't even talked about Mrs. McGonagall, but what's she been at? Is that what I'm thinking about? Mrs. Who? McGonagall. She's like the second headmaster almost. Oh, not her. Yeah, that's not what I'm thinking of. Uh, we haven't really talked about her much. Yeah. I don't know. I never got super into her. She's a cool. I like her as a character, but... Yeah, she's not really, like, that important, though, Cap, though. I mean, I think she's fairly important, but she's not that interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's not super interesting. Yeah. No offense. Um, one thing I want to talk about in this movie was how they had, uh, what's his name? Edward. That's his, like, he was in Twilight. Oh yeah, uh, Robert Pattinson. And then, yeah, the one he died, but that was tough. But that's one of the top five, one hundred percent. That has to be. Okay, so I'll say. You know, not when he died, but when they brought him back, uh-huh. and everybody, and then they had a a Marai Moody in this movie too. I gotta say, Goblet of Fire. A lot of people say this is one of the worst movies. Yeah, I, yeah. This... I gotta say, but when I have an adoration for these tournament type films, you know. Yeah. You, just like movies where you get to see characters uh, competing for something, where yeah. maybe uh, because yeah. of and just I mean, getting getting to see Harry go through all of these tournaments, getting to see all of the world building. The uh, I completely forgot we were even talking about plotline. Okay, when it comes to world building, everything that occurs in the yeah. movie, I feel like everything is correctly in its place, and the the final reveal of Dumbledore. I, come on. Can you really beat that right there? Hey, what do you mean, the final reveal of Dumbledore? Like, revealing Dumbledore in, in his true form. Not just on, on the back of somebody's head. When, uh... Okay, Goblet of Fire. Can you see my screen? Um, no, I cannot see your screen. Well, when I mean, like, the reveal of Dumbledore, I mean, like, you see him in his full form. In previous movies, he was, uh... What was it, Harry Riddle? I can't, I'm so bad with names. In previous movies, he was in like his younger form before he actually became dumb. Well, he before. Oh, he, how did he actors? Wait, am I saying Dumbledore again? I mean Voldemort. 
Oh, I, Dumbledore I, I, I said Dumbledore the entire time. I mean oh, Voldemort. The final re- reveal of Voldemort. My bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you can't really beat the final reveal. Of oh Voldemort. yeah. Yeah, that was fine. And um, they how they like foreshadowed it almost in the beginning of the of the thing because like he like, Harry had a vision. Mm-hmm. And one thing I was gonna talk about was how like. One of the five pots was when Dumbledore was like, who put Harry's name in the goblet? He got a bad but he got pissed. And they were all freaking out. Oh, like, yeah. He was like, he has no choice, but he's got to play the game. You no, know, one, I guess, no one liked Harry Potter. Like, I mean, the whole school hated him. And it was like, I, that was crazy. Oh, I, bro, these movies do such a great job in making me actually feel for Harry Potter. Like, I feel like me and Harry Potter, we are brothers at this point. I, I just know him. And it's like, when I saw Harry Potter, when when I saw Ron just like being bullying Harry Potter, I was like, "Bro, you need to chill out with that." And then once I, yeah, when the whole school, when he was walking down the halls yeah. and people had like this like, bro, uh, pen. yeah. When I saw the whole school doing that, I was like, "Okay, that's everybody else." Harry Potter isn't close friends with everybody. Everybody's jealous of Harry Potter because of his fame. But then once I saw Ron do it, I was like, "Bro, you got to chill out with that." Yeah. I'll give, I'll give well, one of the characters that is like so cool. Like we all love Ron because mm-hmm. like he's sort of like annoying as heck, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, especially in Deathly Hallows Part One. I'll really get into my oh. frustrations with Ron. Well, I, that's because he had a Hogwarts cap, though. Yeah. But. Well, the introductions. I, I just can't really praise the, the world building anymore for this movie. It's. I really like how they build up just the entire wizarding world and they show, you know, all of these places. I really like the introductions of all three schools in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Even the game that they had to do was like always so hype, like oh the water bro, and stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead. Happy. Okay, before we go on for too much longer, let's go ahead and vote. Is the goblet of fire. Blah, blah. Right. I put it, I got it. I put it, I got it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, before I move on, I just, I want to say that the, the other movies did a lot more with their time. This movie, I feel like, even though I really like the plot line, I don't feel like it accomplished as much as the others. I'll say that. Yeah. I know, I, I, I want to say that, actually. I would say, instead of focusing on, like, uh, almost even, like, plot, really, I really think that they took more time into the characters and then they, they really divided the time between Ron, Harry, and everybody. And I feel like one thing that this movie, I would say, is better than all the other movies is it's not that it has less stuff almost happening, but there's almost more, me- more meaning in everything. And then, like, it's more about the characters. And, I, and it really pits you, like, before we were, the characters were here and they were here, and we were watching them act. But in this movie, we were here and then they were, I guess they were doing less stuff, but we got really closer. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just convinced me to change my score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I completely forgot no, about that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is- okay, let's go ahead into pacing. This is, I have a similar complaint with the Sorcerer's Stone, where I like the first few, like, hour or so. Uh, every, the tournaments, I have an amazing time watching the tournaments. And actually, I got to say before I move on, when it comes to Goblet of Fire, I remember how I was saying, uh, when I watched Prisoner of Azkaban, it was like midnight, and I just went to like 2.30 watching the rest of the movie, right? And then, once I finished that, I still wasn't too sleepy. So I, I started Goblet of Fire going with the same mindset, like, okay, I'll watch about the first 30 minutes, and then I'll go to sleep, watch the rest tomorrow. I started watching. I got through the whole movie before I went to sleep. Yeah. It, it, it's not boring at any point. It does seem at some point, points where it goes slower than expected i'm not gonna say it goes slower than it should because they're actually in the ballroom scenes they're they want to do that slow emotional build up and uh the comedy wait, something we haven't talked about with harry potter is the comedy the comedic aspect of harry potter is really underrated for sure i mean it's hard to like i know there's comedy in it but you don't really remember that comedy act you don't remember it, but you, you can definitely say that you've laughed a few times throughout the movie. You can remember at least laughing. Yeah. So. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Harry Potter, like, more than any other movie, it's like, if you, it connects 
the character is always great in this movie, hundred mm-hmm. percent. I, so, I I think I know what I'm gonna give it. Yeah, I know for a fact. Like I'm watching this entire franchise over like, after this podcast, but yo, I'm so reinvigorated in Harry Potter. You know what we might just do? Yeah, we might just have a, a reaction. Let's do a reactions video. Where we <laughs> what, the whole movie? No, let's just re. Maybe like once a day, we can just meet up together, rewatch them one movie each day, and yeah. we'll just we can record reactions. You can post it on your channel. I can post it on my channel. Yo, what kind of a, what kind of movie watcher are you? Are you like a silent watcher? Are you like a talking type of watcher? Uh, you know what? You'll figure out in our movie watches what type of watcher Aye. I am. All right. Aye. <laughs> okay. Uh, pacing. Let me put down my score in the wood. Uh, when it, I'll start talking about directorial stamp. Uh, when it comes to that, I feel like this movie definitely has a style. Wait, do we want pacing? Huh? Did you say do we want a pacing yet? Yeah, we just did pacing. Oh hold on. Alright, um Yeah, go ahead and put down your score. Okay, so for directorial stamp, I'll definitely say uh let's actually figure out who directed the movie first. Yeah. Um The guy who directed it is named Mike Newell. This is the guy that made Ooh, Donnie Brasco. Prince of Persia. Oh wow! He's the guy. That, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's the guy that directed Prince of Persia, uh, Mona Lisa Smile. Nothing memorable or nothing that I think is too memorable beyond that. Yeah. Though. yeah. No, nothing too much. Um, he, although he only directed this movie, I gotta say he. I think I watched a music. Uh, I was gonna say music video. I watched a video on this guy, and I I've. I heard that he is a director that didn't even read the book. Wow. And Power. I think that uh, it kind of shows in the movie where at some points he drags on a little bit. At other points, he skips over some necessary uh, some necessary details. You yeah, can my brother made that too. He was like, in this movie, a lot more happened in the Goblet of Fire. Like, there was lines and like... Uh, I mean, like lion shaped things on his in the books. That's what my mother told me. Yeah. He was always like, the books are better. Man, I don't know, kind of books. I, I, said, them. I, I, I don't, know. he definitely did, he did, I don't think he did a bad job, but I don't think he did a good job either. I don't have much else to say. It's, it's just a really average directing overall for the movie. Nothing amazing like the last movie where Prisoner of Azkaban. <sighs> That movie has such an amazing directorial style and just, uh, you can tell it was made by one guy. This movie is like, uh, somebody just got in the studio, wrote something, told them to do what's written on paper, and that's it. Um, maybe maybe one thing I, you, could, you could point out was maybe in The Maze, the sort of feeling that maybe the shots created, like, tension maybe? I gotta you say, I, I want to say for the... Uh, for the actual tournaments and you know the underwater scenes all of the uh the dragon scenes those are what was the last one the maze all of those are some of my favorite scenes of the entire franchise overall yeah so and those are the few scenes that really seem to have some sort of goal to them where they, of course they don't get me bored because they're action but also they have I don't think this is up to the director, though. I feel like this is more of just the uh, the cinematographer and the lighting coordinator working at their maximum abilities to really make those shots stand out. Yeah. But, yeah, before we leave this movie, though, I just want to, like, say, I'm, uh, once again, they really did talk about more characters. You know, we got Neville Longbottom and a bigger part. We, Harry, uh, what's his name? Ron's siblings play a bigger role and uh what am I gonna say? But pay off. I'm gonna pay off. Okay. Unless, this is uh direct. Do you, I'll go ahead and put down my score. Yeah, I put my score. I was like. Okay. So pay off. I don't. Of all the movies so far, I think this has the least payoff. Overall, I think it has great payoff when it comes to character building, but then again, I think all of the other movies have. Amazing payoff when it comes to character building. 
all these movies, don't they like all end with like they go back on the train and the Hagrid just waves off? So yeah. All there, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Payoff. I'm always I'm always satisfied. Uh, I guess this one was more heartstruck because Edward. How do how do you you didn't even talk about uh, how you felt when Edward? I don't know what his name of the movie was, but what what happened when he died? Oh. Oh, I felt okay. First of all, when when uh, Malfoy was revealed to be one of the Death Eaters, I was just like, obviously, and I yeah. was like, I freaking hate this guy. Yeah. Like I, I was like, you know that he's he's a bad guy. But then once yeah. it's finally revealed that he's working with Dumb with I'm about to say Dumbledore, you know, with Voldemort, you're like, oh thank God, there's no way that this this is a normal guy and he's that mean. That I'll say. Great job with that. Uh, I'll say they did great, as you said, character building uh, for Longbottom. Is that his name? Uh, never Longbottom, yeah. Wait, no, isn't that a... Uh, oh, Edward. Who? I mean, I don't know what his real name is, but I was talking about... Uh, no, the guy Ce- who yeah, Cedric Diggory. Oh, Cedric That's Diggory, you right. Yeah. yeah, Cedric Diggory. They did a great job building him up and actually yeah. presenting him as a nice guy and somebody who's worth... Uh, crying over, even though I didn't no. cry over his death. Yeah, this is one thing about me though. Like, it's not the, it's not when the guy dies. You know what I mean? Like when Iron Man died, I wasn't really that sad. Or when even Cedric Diggory died, I wasn't really yeah. that sad. Oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, I know exactly what you're gonna say, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say I echo that thought. Yeah. I'll let you finish though. Oh, it's when they react to them dying. Exactly. Like, oh, we'll I'm we'll get sure. we'll get to this in a second, but uh. For right now, Cedric Diggory's death. The guy dies. I'm like, yo, you you don't have to do that. And then, <laughs> and they then could, find, they, they did a quick too. Like he was like, I don't know. He was on the ground, and then like he didn't. He couldn't even defend himself. They they, they killed him off quick. They killed like, him off quick. Like, hey, Potter. I gotta say, this is the same complaint that I have with so many franchises. Anytime Harry Potter is in trouble. Of course, I've, it's, it, there's tension created because the guy's in trouble and you don't want him to get hurt. But also, you know he's not going to die. So well, For me, that, that's not how it is at all for me. I, I'm always, I always fall for it. I always think that Harry's done. There's no way he's getting out of this. No, I always fall for it. Sadly, I'll go so. ahead. I'm going to go ahead and I'll be truthful saying that this is how I feel after the movie. As I'm watching the movie, anytime anything happens, I'm like, no, don't kill him. Don't kill him. I fall for it too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but after I watch it, I'm like, how did I fall for that? Of course he's not saying that. But uh, that's just one complaint that I, I have with any franchise in general. Uh, you know what I got? This it's is one thing. like dying. That's like the main worry. You know what I mean? Like he can like be injured and, and I'll be like. Yeah, that, oh, is, no, you know? that is probably what makes me actually uh, tense. Yeah. The, the I see what we do is like, we always think he's not going to die. You know what I mean? But like, I guess that's not really like the point really almost. Like that's not really the main concern. In exactly. the moment. Okay, uh, payoff-wise, I think there's some nice payoff. It doesn't reach its potential, but uh, I know what grade I'll give it at this point. Um, honestly, yeah, I, I, let's, let's go. Okay. Critical acclaim. Let's see what, ru- let's start off with IMDb this time. All uh, right. So far, highest rank has been Prisoner of Azkaban with a 7.9, and the lowest has been uh, Chamber of Secrets with a 7.4, I think. So let's see what Goblet of Fire has to give us. 7.7, right up there with uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. I get enough. I, it's not too low, but I, I, actually, I think it's a bit too high. Yo, that's crazy. And uh, you, you might, <laughs> given that you said that, you're probably going to hate on me for the ratings I gave the movie. I, I don't know. I feel like I really love this movie as I watched it. But the fact that I, we had to rank Prisoner of Azkaban right before this, I think Maybe. we really hurt it. And I feel like I'm, I'm probably going to go back and watch this one first. Well, just watch this one. If I, if I choose, I'm, I don't want to watch all of them once again. Yeah. I'm probably just gonna watch Goblet of Fire and see how I think. I, uh, but should I go uh, ahead and like watch it or like you can watch it together or like what's, what's the we'll see. We'll, we'll converse afterwards and we'll see. Okay, uh, and then now let's see what uh 
what Rotten Tomatoes has to give us. What well, seven point seven and a eighty eight. That's oh, the wow. second. It's both, the highest they gave it, almost right, or second highest. Second highest, right after Prison Rock. I, I think it deserves that actually. I, I, I think. Before. I definitely think that is the second best so far, just off yeah. the top of my head. Of I would agree. Who done so well. I think it's the second best, but yeah, the eighty-eight I still think is uh, on. What I always think of when I think of Ron Tomatoes is what's the highest rated movie, and then I think of what's this movie rated at. And then once again, I'm thinking Black Panther, Goblet yeah. of Fire. I think Goblet of Fire has a has a step ahead. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's not necessarily here that Goblet of Fire is a 98 percent movie. It's that <laughs> I think I'm just hating on Black Panther and saying Black Panther is not. To a be movie. fair, though, if you compare any movie with Hey Potter to me, Hey Potter one automatic. Uh, unless I'm comparing Hey Potter with Hey Potter. Yeah. We're doing that, that. Well, okay, so now we're at. 8877 handed and the calculator says that this My guess is 83.5 82.5 well 8.25 yeah. not bad not bad yeah. okay so that's you might hate me for this let's go ahead and give our scores plot line i got it at a 7.5 for plot line plot line i gave it at 8.5 Okay, so that's an eight average. Now, pacing, I got it at a seven. Dang, I gave it an eight point five again. Okay, so that's what uh, seven point seven five. Now, <laughs> directorial stamp, I got it at a three. Oh, dang! Yeah, I'm, I I wouldn't. For me, it's like if it's bad, it's below five. If it's standard, it's five. If it's, I I gave it a seven. Uh, I'm dang, it's like a four, I think. No, it's like a five. Five. I'm. That's a five, but yeah. I really don't. I feel kind of bad that I gave it a three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand it's like okay, it's not that bad though. Payoff, six point five. I gave it a. I gave it a nine. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I got my reasoning, but I had I had a reason. Okay, so seven point seven five. So for now, this movie didn't do too bad. We'll see how it fares with the others later. Uh, see you next week. I mean, I love PayPal. I can talk about this all day. <laughs>